So a new special formation of all Phobos Space Marines? Let's talk about the new rules, though I will admit that I'm not sure it's going to quite get there in terms of making them strong. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're reviewing a new Space Marine formation, looking at the Vanguard Spearhead Army of Renown, one that's aimed to buff Phobos Marines and make them into a standalone playable force, if you really do want to go very heavy on the Spec Ops Tactical Primaris. I'll be honest though, I'm really not too convinced looking at this that they've actually managed to make them worth it. There really are some interesting and fluffy rules and tactics in here, though maybe not really quite enough to make you want to actually build towards it, unless you're an absolute massive Phobos armor fan and you want literally nothing else. In the video we'll talk through the main restrictions and benefits of the Vanguard Spearhead, the relics that you can field with it, and the stratagems that you can use if you make the formation. Plenty to talk about, so let's jump straight in. So just as a general overview, the Space Marine Vanguard Spearhead is a new army renowned for the Space Marines, the rules are found in Warzone Nakmund Vigilus alone. It's basically trying to make a Primaris Space Marine Stealth Company, and you can run it for any chapter besides Death Watch, though you do swap out your actual chapter tactic as part of the formation. I think perhaps the main aim for it is for anyone who wanted to build round the many Phobos armor kits that are now available from the Primaris range, something that Games Workshop would certainly seem very keen to encourage, the Space Marine Combat Patrol box is basically very Phobos heavy, though I can't say that it's really one that I've seen a lot of people massively embracing as a whole army build. While I guess most chapters do have a 10th company, it just doesn't really seem like the most fitting force for a lot of chapters out there. After the main big chapters, maybe the Raven Guard are the ones that fit with the whole Phobos and Sneaky Sneaky vibe more than most. To this end, you really can't take many of the data sheets from the enormous Codex Space Marines. You're limited to only things with the Phobos keyword plus suppressors, maybe because they come in that same combat patrol box, a stealthy Invicta tactical warsuit, and Impulsor transport. I believe the entirety of the Phobos line consists of Reavers, Infiltrators, Incursors, Eliminators, the Phobos Captain and Lieutenants, the Phobos Librarian, and Kayvan Shrike of the Raven Guard. I think it's perhaps a touch disappointing that they didn't choose to include things like Scouts and the Landspeeder Storm in this as well. They certainly fit with the vibe, and the only reason I can think is to exclude firstborn marines. In general though, the far bigger problem is that to take this list of units, you're basically giving up almost all of the best damage dealers out of Codex Space Marines, everything from elite assault infantry, to fire support units like eradicators or attack bikes, dreadnoughts, devastators and battle tanks. I feel like all the units that do deal a decent amount of damage out of this list do kind of pay a bit of a premium for all their utility. Things like the suppressors with their boosted movement, or the Invicta with its forward deploy. Being able to efficiently remove enemy units just really is incredibly important, so the rules in this formation are better be very very good indeed if they are going to justify leaving behind a lot of your best damage dealers. Finally, besides that, as we said there are no Death Watch allowed in this, possibly because they recently got their own army of renown with the veteran kill teams, and if you take this army you don't get any of your regular chapter tactics, such as say for example no exploding sixes for imperial fists, you get a different set of benefits instead, but you still do get your chapter keyword, so you can use things like super doctrines, stratagems, relics, and the rest. On the plus side, to replace that chapter tactic, you get a trio of different benefits. The first one you get is light cover at greater than 18 inch range, essentially the same benefit as stealthy from the main rulebook. That one's not a bad benefit, though not really enough to justify itself on its own. Probably the most interesting bit of the whole formation is that infantry units get a plus one to hit if they move greater than four inches from their starting position when they're shooting at range. After this whole list, I really think that this is quite good on two different units. The infiltrators, incursors, and reavers are all kind of okay, seeing as they don't really have the best damage output anyway. But it's really quite nice on things like the suppressors and the eliminators. They do generally get minus one penalties for moving and shooting with their heavy weapons, so it's quite nice to counteract that. Finally, as a small added bonus, you get a bonus consolidate, it goes up to 6 inches, certainly handy enough for snagging objectives or tagging other units, but would perhaps be a lot more handy if the army had a few more elite assault infantry rather than a whole load of light skirmishers. Otherwise, besides that, it's 4 relics and 8 stratagems, which I think do need to do some very heavy lifting, as well as chapter tactic alternative is quite nice, it's just not really quite worth it to lock out a lot of the best choices in the whole of Codex Space Marines. Looking at some of those other options then, here are the four relics that are available. I'll admit I do quite like the Knight's Blade, it replaces a combat knife or paired combat blades. 
and you can attack with it at strength user AP-3 damage 2 and you wound non-vehicles on an automatic 2 plus. I think this is quite a helpful benefit to have to the formation because basically most of their characters don't really do that much damage. This one definitely makes the Reaver Lieutenant and the Captain a lot more viable. It's always a bit sad with characters that have great numbers of attacks and hit on twos and then basically have no decent combat weapons to strike with. Next up is the Armour Umbral. This one means that hit rolls of 1 to 3 always fail against the bearer and also advance and charge. Seems kind of okay though not that standout, will be a lot better on something that moved fast anyway. Shadow's Touch is a Relic Librarian 4 sword, giving you strength plus 3, AP minus 4 and damage 2. It does have a rather fun special rule where if you successfully cast a spell in the previous psychic phase then it just cuts straight through imbles. Kind of feels like a bit of a reimagining of the old force rules from previous editions of the game. Could potentially make the librarian into a lot more of a character killer. Striking at strength 7 is pretty nice. Finally we have another set of relic bolts in the Morbidth bolt. They allow you to only make one single attack with a bolt weapon and the hit deals two mortal wounds to the target and no other damage and the enemy unit that took the damage gets minus one to any combat attrition tests that turn. I'm not really too bothered about the combat attrition thing, but I guess if you did have a character that you thought might be shooting on three turns or more, maybe that could be worth it just for the mortal wound damage output alone. Kind of a shame that you can't give this to something like an Eliminator Sergeant perhaps. Out of these choices, I think my favourite is by far the Knight's Blade. That one transforms an otherwise really not threatening melee character into a fairly potent one. Being flat 2 damage though always has the ability to fall down against anything with minus 1 damage. Second to that, I do like the Librarian's Force Sword, ignoring Invuls as a powerful mechanic. Maybe just a bit of a shame that all these seem to be about Hero Hammer though as opposed to Command. I feel like some relics and choices to actually lead the Phobos troops into battle might have been a bit more handy. Finally for the formation we have the Stratagems. Interestingly, a few of the Stratagems seem to work with keywords. I feel like they might have made this a little bit overly complicated just for the sake of it, though maybe it's to try and make us think that these units have these pieces of gear. The way this bit seems to work is that a couple of your infiltrators can pick up keywords. If you don't have any of the other special kits like a helix gauntlet or a comms array, then one can take a vox breaker or specs and one can take a saboteur explosive pack, both of those appear to be completely for free. And then for the incursor squad one of them can take a marksman target tracker, and all of those keywords basically just allow you to access certain stratagems. In any case, to go through the options available to the spearhead, for one command point we have a Storm of Death, this one's a Reaver Squad 1 in melee, and if they're fighting infantry or bikes, 6 sister wounds deal 1 mortal wound in addition to their normal damage. I guess theoretically, if we were bringing an absolute ton of Reaver Squads, that could add up to something like 4 or 5 mortal wounds per turn. Quite nice to actually have a nice flat buff to Reaver's melee capability though only being locked to being against infantry or bikes does mean that they're still not exactly going to be general combatants that can deal with a lot of stuff. For 1 CP we have Ocular Network, this is for any unit attacking monsters or vehicles, and any wound rolls of a 6 cause the attack to be AP-2 better. I guess that does make it kind of likely that a big squad with a lot of bolters would actually be able to punch through a few wounds against those targets, but just in terms of raw damage out of a command point this one isn't a particularly good one I think. Even if you're firing something like 20 shots at an enemy vehicle, on average it's still only going to affect around about 2 wound rolls. Next up for 2 CP we have Dispersal Protocols. This one's perhaps a more interesting one. It allows you to fall back at the end of the fight phase with a unit. Perhaps the best idea would be if you're charged by an enemy unit, they almost kill you but not quite. You then get to fall back, so your unit's basically able to move, shoot and assault normally that turn. Or you could potentially even use it to gain a bit of movement onto an objective for your command phase and your scoring. A little bit on the pricey side at 2 CP, but occasionally that's going to be situationally incredibly powerful and could be totally worth it. For 1 CP we have the Saboteur Explosive Pack, that one's the keyworded Infiltrator one, and you can use it to give a little bit of mortal wound damage when you fall back from an enemy. When you fall back, you roll a 2 to 5 for D3 mortal wounds or a 6 for 3 and it's particularly effective against fortifications, giving you a plus 3 to the roll against buildings. I can't say I'm a massive fan of this one to be honest. The damage output really isn't all that great for 1 CP, and usually if you are falling back from a unit, there's a good chance you might have other units to be able to shoot that unit dead, so the mortal wounds aren't the most important thing. Perhaps the Vox Breaker or Specs could be a little bit more of a useful thing though. Basically for 1 command point, you can make 1 enemy unit within 18 inches minus 1 to hit at range, 
quite a nice helpful pop-up debuff if you do have a really scary enemy shooting unit about. And as an additional bonus, if they charge you, one of your squads can hold steady or set to defend, giving you either plus one to hit in melee or in overwatch. That perhaps kind of depends on what sort of enemy units you're facing, but for really big units like say Imperial Knights and things, then that could be a very nice use of one CP. The Incursor one is that Marksman target tracker for two command points, and this basically means that an Incursor squad with the keyword can ignore Lookout Sir for that shooting attack, which theoretically could be something like 20 shots at strength 4, AP minus 1, damage 1 when you're in the tactical doctrine, ignoring modifiers and ignoring cover saves. Perhaps a handy tool to have in the back pocket if you really do have the chance to shut down an enemy character that's either injured or just a toughness 3 low save one. Still though, it is a bit of a trade-off when you're paying 2 CP for it. It certainly seems a far cry from when the intercessors could do that with their stalker bolt rifles. The better AP and damage on those just made them hit a lot harder and delete characters a bit easier. For 1 CP, we have Tactical Augury. This allows a unit's ranged attacks to ignore the benefits of cover. I guess kind of handy enough on something like suppressors with relatively low AP auto cannons, perhaps. But I do feel that use might well be limited by not really having any truly decent shooting units to buff. The suppressors and the eliminators are okay, but they come in quite small units. And finally, and perhaps one of the most fun ones, is for 2 CP pivotal moments. One core unit targeting the enemy warlord gets one mortal wound per successful wound roll on the target, and the attack sequence ends. As with a lot of these buffs, it's a ranged attack, not a melee attack, and it does seem like it might be best geared to the bigger units of Phobos troops, things like Reavers, Infiltrators, or Incursors with mass bolt shots. I guess in theory, if you were getting very spendy indeed, you could combine that with the Marksman Target Tracker for 4 CP for Incursors to gun down an enemy warlord really efficiently, but that does seem really quite a lot of investment, and you do need to get them in range and in line of sight in the first place. Still though, I could imagine that being a really fun one if it ever does come up, and expose Warlord suddenly meeting his ends to the mass shots of Infiltrators or Incursors. Overall, out of these ones, perhaps some of the easiest to use seem like the Vox Breaker or Specs, and maybe the Dispersal Protocols to allow you to fall back easily. I must admit, quite a lot of the others just seem a little bit underwhelming with the units that you can actually use them on, and maybe okay, but only in the right situation. So overall for the army, I really don't think that the all Phobos Vanguard Spearhead is really going to be seen that all that much in tournament play. Perhaps relegated to just a fun and fluffy army, if you do happen to have taken a ridiculous amount of Phobos troops and you want to put them on the board with some fun different rules. Kind of a shame that Games Workshop didn't manage to make these a little bit stronger. It feels like the sort of army that an army of renown really could be quite good for. Maybe they could have afforded to be a little bit more liberal with the buffs and upgrades that they gave these units, knowing that they'd restricted themselves to some relatively underwhelming data sheets, at least in terms of damage output, within Codex Space Marines. Still though, I'll certainly be interested to hear what you guys have to say. Do you agree with my assessment, or is there anything about the formation that you think I've overlooked? If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where I will certainly try and keep up with any new rules coming out from Games Workshop, and plenty more videos for the Space Marines. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description below. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.